time, we will have the posting of the POW. Thank you. Maybe see you. Well, good morning. What a, what a glorious morning it is. A little chilly, but the sun shining. I told Mr. Webb this morning that the downside of still trying to live out of two different houses, I, I don't have any of my red, white, and blue ties with me yet. They're, they're still up north, so I apologize for that. Ordinarily, I would have a, a nice, colorful tie. Excuse me. I know this has been a great program in the past, a very strong tradition, and uh, we expect nothing less than, than that today. Um, we're very excited to get things going, and so at this time, we will have the National Anthem with the High School Choir. Activities of the Indiana Secondary School Administrators 
approves the American Legion Flag Education Test. The Flag Education Test is given here at Fountain Central during the month of October, which allows our presentation to co so coincide with this ceremony today. The test is open to fourth grade elementary grade students in all public, private, and parochial schools. Each student participating participating in this program takes the same test. The answers on the test are scored against the standardized answer sheet. The Our Country's Flag book is used as a study guide for this closed book test. It consists of 20 questions, and then they write an essay on what the American flag means to them. The winners then advance to the District 6, and last year we got tied up a few things because we had some problems with the uh, certificates. So last year we had, both students were six district winners, and at this time, will Elise Webb please come forward? Mr. Rodney Strong, that he was last year's department commander. He's here today, and we're going to have him present these awards.
To me, this flag means when I grow up, I can be anything I want. It represents hope for my future. When I see the flag, I feel a great sense of pride. I'm proud to be an American and live in the greatest country in the world.
and sponsored by Newtown is Shai Rum.
last year's American Legion Commander. And I have Mr. Rodney Strong, please come up. Please be the man. Charles American Legion Post 288 would like to present you with a Lifetime Achievement Award in recognition of your service, patriotism, and commitment to our community, state, and nation. He honorably served in the United States Navy from 1980 to 1984, completing two tours off the coast of Beirut, Lebanon, and one tour off the coast of Grenada, earning his American Legion eligibility. He was a Department of Indian American Legion 2018-19 Department Commander. He is a 29-year member of the American Legion Post 72 in Crawfordsville. He previously served 6th District as District Vice Commander, District Commander in 6th District, Cougar Boy State Chairman. He also served as the Southern Vice Commander, Rehabilitation Commission Chairman, Children and Youth Commission Chairman, Mechanism Commission Commission Chairman and Internal Affairs Commission Chairman. A 55 member of the Sons of American Legion Squadron served as the attachment commander of Indiana from 1993 to 94. Commander Strong is the only person in Indiana to serve both the Sons of the Legion Commander and the Park of Indiana Commander. Presented by the Legion Post 288, 8th day of November, Bob McAvee Commander. Central here. 
I get to see my programs, look through my book before we have our conferences. I was very happy that happened. For you educators, we don't leave the educators out either. We have from K to five, six to eight, and nine to 12, we give awards out at our state convention. But you need to go through the post because you have to be a district winner and go on through the chairs like that. But there is money out there. So please talk to this post on any of our programs. It's indianalegion.org. If any of you guys or gals want to look at the programs and see if you want to participate in them, go for it. Like I said, we do a lot of programs. I know this post sponsors a lot of things around this community, and I'm very proud of this post. This will get framed and put on my wall with the rest of my awards I've received this past year. This is, I'm very proud of this. Thank you, guys.
Desert Storm. Arsnea and Kasura.
have to get Jeff here. I'm going to get Jeff here in our early days.
for the study of religion and liberty. And he is the director of the Hoosier Leadership Series, a leadership training program for conservatives in Indiana whose mission is educating Indiana leaders on policy and culture. John lives in Avon with his wife, Jean, and his four children. And let's not forget his dog, Cricket. <laughs> the Honorable John Crane. He was not happy. <laughs> and 
and he realized that as he's driving to school with his younger brother, he's not cool. <laughs> but I said, hey, you want a lot of money? And so I also I didn't give it to him. I made him buy it for $200. It's probably worth about 20 but I wanted to make a profit. <laughs> begun to appreciate the fact that he has a car, as rickety as it might be. But what he may not fully appreciate, and hopefully in years to come he will, is it's not about the car. It's about the character that you develop. By developing gratefulness. I, I clapped a lot this morning for a lot of different people, and it, it realized that it reinforced to me how much this group of people is grateful and thankful. And boy, we need a lot more of that in our world today. We live in a culture that's all about me and what's mine and my rights and what I want. And it's tough if you're focused on that to get past that, to just thank people who have built the foundation upon which we stand. Ronald Reagan back in 1961 famously said this, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States when men were free. That was 1961. <coughs> he was very prophetic. Because we live in a different culture now. For those of you who are older in the room, you recognize some of the trends that are happening. I just saw a recent statistic. Seven out of 10, 70% of millennials say that they would vote for a socialist president. Now millennials have a lot of good qualities. But they also need to be educated on certain things. The reason why they embrace socialism is because they've never had to live under it. There is a reason why places like Venezuela, for example, are not in a position to do great good for the world because they're just struggling to survive. Their country is on fire, figuratively and literally. We do not live in a country like that, but if we descend to a country like that, we will not be in a position to offer the great good that we have been able to offer to literally millions of people around the world, generation upon generation. And the reason we can do that is because of veterans who are represented in this room and the countless others represented around our country and around the world, many of whom have sacrificed life and limb in order to protect our country. This is important because ideas matter. Tom Terrence said ideas have consequences because ideas lead to actions. And that's what we need to understand. We are in a different kind of battle, a battle that is not always waged on battlefields across the ocean. We are in a battle of ideas, good versus evil, freedom versus tyranny, selflessness versus selfishness, the dignity of human beings versus the discarding of human beings, and so it goes. There is a clash of what we call worldviews, or a clash of ideas. And so we continually need people who will stand up, who will speak up, who will act in order to defend those ideas. Because ultimately what it is, is we want to stand up for the, what's good and right and true and beautiful because we care about people. And we want all of you to have a bright future, not just to survive going forward, but to thrive going into the future. Are there things still worth fighting for? You bet there are. But we live in a culture that downplays fighting. You know, we're all supposed to be kind and nobody's ever supposed to say a harsh word. Well, tell that to our enemies. There are people out here who genuinely are seeking our harm. Somebody better stand up. Somebody better be the sheepdog. Somebody better be the guardian 
to stand for all that is good. A friend of mine, John Dickerson, he's a pastor over in Brownsburg, and he's written a number of books. One of them um, is called Hope of Nations, and he describes that he and his family were living in California. And they had a fruit tree in the backyard. And I mean, this tree was like an orange tree, and it had gorgeous fruit. And so they would come out, and they would pick the oranges, and they would eat the oranges, and they would make orange juice, and they would benefit from all that that fruit tree provided. But as he points out in his book, they were able to take advantage of the hard work of a previous generation of somebody who decided to plant that tree, to till the soil, to water it, to do all the things in order for that tree to be everything that it could be. And he makes the point that we live in the same kind of situation. All of you young people, you, I cannot tell you how blessed you are to live in the United States of America, to live in the great state of Indiana, and to live here in Fountain County. You really are, and you will come to discover that. But the reason why is because of all the older generation sitting down here, people who have toiled and sacrificed so that you be protected, to be able to get an education, to be able to learn skills, to be able to go on and have a life. Just a few years ago, back in about 2015, there was a picture that was taken at a West Point graduation. West Point is a military academy out in New York. Alex Hydrock was the young man who was graduating that day, and the picture caught, caught him with tears streaming down his face at his graduation ceremony. And the picture went viral. Later, Alex wrote this. He says, I want to thank everyone for your kind and thoughtful comments on this picture, a moment that I will never forget. At this moment, I was overwhelmed with emotion. Three things came to my mind that led to those tears. The first is where I started. I am from Haiti, and never did I imagine that such an honor would one day be bestowed upon me. The second is where I am. Men and women who have preserved the very essence of the human condition stood in that position and took that same oath at West Point. Men who preserved our union in a dark period of this country's history. Men who scaled the face of adversity and liberated Europe from fascism and Nazism. Women who rewrote the narrative and challenged the status quo. The third is my future. Shortly after I leave, I will report to Fort Rucker to start flight school. Knowing that one day I will be a pilot is humbling beyond words. I could not help but be flooded with emotions knowing that I will be leading these men and women who are willing to give their all to preserve what we value as the American way of life. To me, that is the greatest honor. He understood it. <coughs> He understood what was at stake. He was willing to embrace that. In fact, he was honored to embrace that. And so I leave you with the challenge that is called the Trepto Pledge. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Martin Trepto. He served in World War I. He was a barber from Cherokee, Iowa. He enlisted in the National Guard during World War I in the 42nd Division, which Douglas MacArthur tag as the Rainbow Division. The reason he called it the Rainbow Division was because it stretched across the country like a rainbow. All the different people were in the National Guard. July 30th, 1918, they were under heavy fire. And a message needed to be taken from one platoon over to the other. And Private Trepto volunteered. He did not hesitate. He grabbed the message and ran off. And as he neared the platoon leader to deliver the message, he was cut down by a burst of German fire. He was 25 years old. As his personal effects were being gathered up, this was found in the inside cover of his diary. Private Trapto wrote this, America must win this war, and I will work, I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure, I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost as if the issue of the whole struggle depended upon me alone. I guarantee you this, the freedoms that we enjoy today 
are not freedoms that can lie dormant. They must be attended to. I love the, the flag program and continuing to reinforce those values that are enduring, those values upon which our nation has been built. But they are values that we must continue to cultivate so that the sacrifices of the best and bravest among us will not have been in vain. Let us show ourselves worthy of the gift of freedom that has been bestowed upon us, and it is that baton of freedom that we then must pass on to the next generation of young Americans coming behind us. So we honor our brave men and women today who have exemplified service over self, who have seen those regimes and ideas that threaten our freedoms, and who have said, not on my watch, not on my watch, may we honor their sacrifices by following their examples in our lives. God bless you all, God bless our nation, and God bless our great state of Indiana. Thank you.
at this time, we're going to have a moment of silence in memory of those who gave the ultimate sacrifice in the service of the country. Thank you. At this time, the Boy Scouts of America will do the voting of the flag. Turn to Mr. Mark Holder. Holding the American flag into a triangle gives unique honor and respect to the flag. Have you ever wondered what each of the 13 folds represents? <coughs> the first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is for our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veteran departing our ranks who gave a portion of his or her life for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold stands for our weaker nature. As American citizens trusting in God, it's to him we turn to in times of peace, as well as war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to America. In the words of Stephen Decatur, our country, in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is where our heart lies. It is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is the armed forces that protect our country and flag against enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day and to honor our mother, for whom it flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood, for it is through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great have been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to Father, for he has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since he or she was first born. The eleventh fold, in the eyes of Hebrew citizens, represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in their eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold, in the eyes of a Christian citizen, 
represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in their eyes God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The thirteenth fold, when the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our nation's motto, In God We Trust. After the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it takes on the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and Marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones, who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today.
salute to military etiquette is the act of expressing respect. During the Civil War and some of the battles, the battlefields would become cluttered with the dead and the wounded. Both sides would cease fire by agreement to clear the battlefield to care for the dead and the wounded. Then each side would fire three rifle shots into the air to signal that they had cared for their dead and wounded and were ready to return to battle. They then would resume fighting as if they had never stopped. This is the reason for the three rifle volleys fired over the casket of a service member. It is to indicate that he or she has been cared for, and it has evolved into a salute of honor, uh, to honor the deceased for their service to our country. Firing three rifle volleys over the casket is one of the highest honors for a deceased military veteran. The Charles Forrest Legion, American Legion Post 288 of Petersburg, Indiana, would like to now bestow this honor in remembrance of all our fallen comrades. May I ask everyone to please rise in a moment of silence for this summer.
thank you, Mr. Goings. Uh, this will be brief because he did all my thank yous for me. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, all kidding aside, uh, wow. Uh, it's been 15 years since I've been here for a uh, presentation like this, and it just blows me away. Um, I want to thank all the student groups, as you going said, that helped put this together, fire band, all of them, student council. Excuse me. Congratulations to the students who won the awards today. Outstanding. I want to thank our guest speaker, the Honorable Mr. Crane. Of course, without the veterans, we don't know where we would be. So our most deep and sincere gratitude for everything that you've done. And do we have any high school students who've already committed to the military? Two or three? Thank you very much.